Okay, all right. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm glad to introduce Tai Han today to give a presentation of his recent research on neural architecture search and AutoML to design those efficient and compact neural networks that run fast on a um, energy constrained um, a hardware device. Okay, and before that, I will give a short interview, a uh, short overview of what we do. Okay, so our lab focuses on efficient deep learning and tiny ML. So tiny ML means machine learning algorithms that can work on small and and hardware constrained devices and efficient deep learning. Okay, um, so Tai Han works uh, Han works on the model compression and neural architecture search including the pruning algorithms, make a neural network large, neural network small, quantization techniques, distillation techniques, and he has proposed the two generations of autom automated neural network architecture design, uh, Proxilis NAS, which has already been integrated by Facebook PyTorch, and also by AWS, uh, Amazon AutoGloom Auto -Gloom fr framework. And also his recent once for all network has reached state of the art accuracy and latency uh, surpassing the mobile network version three and also the efficient net receiving the first place in two com uh, low power computer vision challenges and surpass the performance of human level performance using his AI designed by AI. Okay, so I think that will be very relevant um, to the uh, driver team where we have a limited computation budget, but we have a lot of computation given this uh, tight, com tight computation budget. Okay. And another uh, two research areas we uh, we work on, I uh, will briefly mention that, including video recognition. We have presented that in G's talk a few weeks ago, and also 3D point cloud recognition with the PPC has already landed in the course, and also machine translation. And finally, we also work on efficient hardware, customized hardware, and AI for EDA. Okay, so our goal is to target small model, low latency, and energy, and efficient AI. And that I will handle the presentation of Han to talk about the uh, one or network, train one, one network and specialize it for efficient deployment, and it, which is also the winning solution uh, for the third and fourth uh, low power computer vision challenge. Okay. So, Han, you may start. Okay. Hi, everyone. Can you see the screen? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, uh, some problems. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm very glad to be here to introduce our work with for train one network and specialize it for efficient deployment. So uh, efficient inference uh, is crucial, especially on resource constrained edge devices. Different uh, hardware platforms, we have different properties and uh, different computational resources. For example, for the uh, GPU devices, it has, uh, uh, for example, a uh, V100 GPU, it has uh, 30, 32 gigabytes of memory and uh, a, a very uh, large number of uh, computation flops. Uh, and to the uh, resource constrained mobile devices and even tiny devices. And uh, with only uh, with mega uh, uh, orders of magnitude lower computation and memory, so it is very critical to customize new networks to fit different uh, hardware platforms to achieve the best trade-off between accuracy and efficiency, especially when we are constrained uh, in terms of resources. So, uh, given a diverse spectrum of hardware platforms, it is very challenging to design specialized new networks for each case. So assuming we are using neural architecture search to auto design specialized models. So it will take around 40k GPU hours to uh, get a specialized model for a single device. So it is affordable for big companies like Google. But uh, however, when we have more devices, for example, in four in this case, so we, for each case, we need to repeat this process. So we need to uh, search a new specialized new network for a device and uh, retrain the searched architecture from scratch and uh, for each case. So it will increase the total uh, GPU hours by four times. So increasing from 40K to uh, 106K GPU hours. 
So as such, the total design cost will quickly become prohibitive when we want to cover a diverse range of hardware platforms, uh, including both the cloud devices and age devices. So this will also lead to critical environmental issues, since a large number of GPU hours will directly translate to vast carbon dioxide emissions. So there is a, so, so for this uh, environmental problem, there is also a growing concern about, about this problem. So it, it is uh, also of great importance to address, address this, this environmental problem. And uh, uh, besides we handling diverse hardware platforms, so even when we are running on the same hardware platforms, we may also need to specialize new networks to fit different uh, battery levels or different workloads. So uh, for example, when we have a, a, a more battery, full of battery, so we may want a, a larger model to have a better accuracy. But when we uh, have, uh, when the uh, battery will, uh, uh, are very close to uh, uh, run out, so we may need to uh, have a smaller model, and uh, uh, but with slightly uh, worse accuracy. So we want a smooth transition between different modes uh, on the same device, and uh, uh, additionally, uh, new networks pre-trained on large-scale data sets, such, uh, such as ImageNet. Is, uh, they are widely used for many downstream region tasks, such as uh, detection and segmentation uh, and transfer learning. Uh, uh, it, it used to be very difficult to design specialized uh, pre-trained models for these downstream tasks, since uh, getting a pre-trained model, meaning training a model on the internet, so it will take a, a very large number of GPU hours to train a single model. And searching a pre-trained model may involve uh, training thousands of um, ImageNet models. So it will, uh, it's very expensive. But uh, using, uh, uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, also a very uh, critical problem for the uh, diverse downstream tasks. And uh, uh, to uh, all of these uh, problems require to uh, reduce this linearly growing design cost. And uh, uh, in this work, we introduced the uh, once for network to efficiently design, uh, search for efficient models, specialized models. So the, the key idea is to uh, decouple model training from architecture search. So in the model training stage, we train a single once for network uh, that supports all of the architectural configurations in the design space. And in the deployment stage, we can directly get a specialized subnetwork that fits the given hardware without retraining. So this process uh, can be repeat many times, get a specialized new networks for uh, different hardware platforms without retraining. And uh, uh, to enable this high flexibility, we uh, cover four different dimensions of neural architectures, uh, including resolution, kernel size, depth, and the width. In total, a single S4 network comprises uh, more than 10 to the power of 19 different subnetworks. Uh, sub so given so many subnetworks to support, uh, it becomes much more challenging to optimize com compared to training a normal network. So has, uh, in this work, we introduced the progress thinking technique uh, to address this problem. Uh, specifically, we cast the training process of the West 4 network as a progress thinking and joint fine training process. So we start with training the full network, then progressively shrink the network to support smaller subnetworks. So while jointly fine training both the uh, both large and small subnetworks to avoid forgetting. So uh, uh, in this perspective, progress thinking, uh, it can be viewed as a generalized uh, uh, network pruning process that has a much higher flexibility. So it, it not only shrinks the width dimension, but also the depth, kernel size, and resolution dimension. And besides, it produces a much more powerful S4 network that can fit different hardware uh, platforms rather than a single pruned network. Uh, specifically for the resolution dimension, so we will randomly sample uh, input image size for each batch throughout the whole training process. 
And for the kernel size dimension, we start with the full kernel size, then uh, support smaller kernels by uh, taking centered weights in the large kernel via a transformation matrix. And for the depth dimension, we gradually allow la later layers in each unit to be skipped to reduce the depth. And finally, for the width dimension, so we keep uh, the most important channels according to the L1 known when shrinking the width. So uh, here shows the results on uh, of different subnetworks sampled from the pre-trained Westfall network on, on Mitinet. So we can see that uh, across many different uh, uh, architectural configurations, so progressive thinking can, uh, is shown in green, so it consistently outperforms uh, uh, without progress thinking, which is shown in yellow. And uh, uh, based on the, uh, <coughs> so based on the pre-trained Westfall network, uh, we want to uh, get, quickly get a specialized uh, sub-network uh, for a given hardware and constraint. So here we uh, may still have the repeated back, uh, search cost. And to, uh, so we, we want to, also want to eliminate this repeated search cost. And uh, uh, therefore, we, here we use the predictor-based architecture search to, uh, to search for the uh, subnetwork. And uh, uh, specifically, so we have the pre-trained Westfall network, and we sample uh, architectures uh, in the, search, uh, in the search, uh, design space, and uh, we can uh, measure the accuracy of the, the sampled architecture on the held out validation set, so uh, which is a subset sampled from the uh, original training set. And uh, since uh, with Westfall, we, we can directly grab the weights from the Westfall network without a training. So this, percent, this step can be done very quickly. And we can measure, uh, collect the, the architecture accuracy data or uh, uh, collect many pairs of such kind of data. And with uh, such kind of data, we can train uh, very accurate accuracy prediction model. So the IMSE between the predicted accuracy and uh, the uh, real accuracy is only about 0.2% uh, on, on the uh, on GNAT. And besides the uh, accuracy prediction model, so we also have the uh, latency prediction model. So uh, it's also done by uh, collecting the uh, uh, latency, date, latency information of the uh, sampled architectures on the target hardware, and we use that data to uh, build the latency prediction model. For, for the mobile platform, a uh, simple, a very simple lookup table can can uh, provide very accurate latency prediction. And based on these uh, predictors, so we can conduct a very low cost uh, architecture search to find a specialized subnetwork for the uh, target hardware and the uh, uh, target resource constraints. And uh, so uh, after uh, with uh, the Westfall network and the uh, uh, predictor-based uh, architecture search, so we can achieve very competitive accuracy performances on the ImageNet uh, data set. So uh, in this figure, so Westfall is on the top left corner in the accuracy computation trade-off curve, uh, which shows it's very, uh, it's highly efficient. So it sets a new state of the art 80% top one accuracy on GNAT under, uh, under the mobile setting, which is uh, less than 600 uh, million max. And uh, compared to efficient net and the mobile net v3, so uh, West 4 is, uh, is 2.6 uh, times and uh, 1.5 times uh, faster with a similar or higher accuracy performance. And uh, a, a very interesting observation is that we, we, we find that uh, training the search architecture uh, from scratch, it cannot reach the same level accuracy as once for. So it suggests that uh, not only the neural architectures, but also the, the, the whole training process contributes to the uh, final performances of the once for. And uh, uh, so uh, once for also in, in enables uh, very fast specialization across many devices uh, under a wide spectrum of latency constraints. So here we, we have a GPU, a CPU, a, a desktop GPU, uh, and, uh, 
and uh, mobile GPU, that's an, uh, no, no, no mobile GPU, okay. Uh, mobile DSP and uh, FPGA, so it consistently outperforms mobile net v3 on all scenarios. And the design cost once for will stay constant uh, with respect to the number of hardware platforms. So uh, it reduces the total cost by more than 1,000 times compared to the uh, in NASNet under 40 uh, platforms. If we have more platforms, the uh, reduction ratio will be higher. And uh, we, uh, it not only works on general purpose hardware, but also on specialized uh, deep learning accelerators. So on FPGA, uh, it improves arithmetic intensity by 40% and uh, uh, GOPS per second by 57%. Compared to uh, compared with mobile net v2, so it shows that uh, so using non-specialized neural networks, it does not uh, does not fu fully utilize the hardware resources. So there is still a large room for improvement through uh, designing specialized neural networks uh, for the target hardware. And we uh, apply uh, the West4 network uh, in uh, in. Uh, low power computer vision challenges. So we want a uh, uh, first place in the third and fourth uh, challenges. So, uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, so what's for, uh, uh, besides designing specialized uh, neural architectures, so uh, to uh, improve the efficiency of the neural network, uh, we, we typically have uh, additional uh, pruning and quantization steps. So uh, conventionally, we use to uh, have a three-stage pipeline to uh, first design a neural network architecture, then prune it, and then quantize the model. And finally, we deploy the, the model on the target hardware. Uh, but it may not be the optimal solution since uh, neural networks that are good in the first stage, it may not be suitable for pruning and quantization. So, uh, with once for we can uh, we can uh, uh, afford to jointly optimize the neural architecture pruning and the quantization. So uh, specifically, uh, notice that uh, channel pruning it can be viewed as a special kind of neural architecture search that searches the channel numbers. So we can first extend the once for from only adapting the uh, width extension ratio to fine grained uh, channel number adaptations. So, for example, uh, uh, in 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 the previous ones, for we may only adapting uh, uh, the uh, uh, have the flexibility to choose a different uh, expansion ratio in the MB comp layer. So three, uh, four, or six. So here we may have a more fine grained uh, channel number uh, flexibility. Uh, for example, eight, uh, sixteen, uh, twenty-four, etc. And in this way, we merge uh, uh, neural architecture design and channel pruning in a single in single framework. And secondly, we uh, to uh, we observe that uh, to incorporate quantization uh, further incorporate quantization. So we uh, we first observe that uh, quantization will dramatically infect the functionality of the uh, network. Therefore, after quantization, so neural networks at least require a few epochs of fine training to retain the uh, accuracy performance. So it makes uh, it much more time consuming to collect the accuracy architecture data set for quantized model compared to the uh, full precision case. So in the full precision case, we can uh, directly grab the weights from the one network and measure it uh, on the uh, validation set. But in this case, we need to uh, need a few epochs of fine training. So it's much more uh, time consuming. Therefore, uh, for the full precision case, we can afford to collect a large data set, but for the quantization case, we can only afford to collect a very small data set. So we, uh, to uh, improve the, uh, 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 to improve the accuracy uh, on the quantization case. So we first, we, here we have the predictor transfer uh, technique. So we first pre-train the uh, full precision accuracy predictor using the large scale data set. And then we transfer this full precision accuracy predictor to uh, the small scale quantization data set. So it significantly improves the uh, uh, training and uh, uh, performances of the uh, quantization, uh, the accuracy predictor on the quantization data set. So finally, uh, with the uh, quant uh, quantized model 
transfer predictor and uh, and the uh, hardware latency predictor, which is the same as the uh, previous one. So, so we conduct joint uh, uh, evolution search to jointly optimize the architecture pruning and the quantization. So uh, uh, here shows the uh, comparison with uh, pure quantization uh, techniques. So uh, our joint quantization approach can significantly outperform pure quantization methods uh, like uh, hardware-aware uh, quantization. So, uh, and we can also observe a clear performance drops uh, in both latency and energy case uh, if we do not use the uh, predict transfer. And uh, uh, compared to previous multi-stage optimization, so uh, our joint optimization provides a 2.3% uh, accuracy improvement with uh, the same latency or 1 uh, more than 1.5 times uh, speed up with a similar accuracy performance. Okay.